Hey everyone, it is Friday, May 20th. The time right now is 5.28 p.m. and the temperature is around 19 degrees Celsius. I'm here in the entertainment district. There's a look at one of the ugliest buildings in the city, that is Metro Hall. And just to the north of me is King Street West. And that would be Roy Thompson Hall and the financial district just beyond it. And for this one, I'm gonna head south down to Front Street, then I'm gonna walk over to John Street. Then I'm gonna head north up the entire length of John Street. And that'll take me to Grange Park. And from there, I'll probably just head on over to St. Patrick Subway Station. So that area where I started is known as David Peacut Square. And this is Wellington Street here. And I just recorded a video through this rather luxurious hotel. That is the Ritz-Carlton. So if it's not up already, you should be able to find that on the channel pretty soon. So I'm just gonna head south along the east side of the Ritz here. As you can see, I left my car in front of the Ritz. I think it's safe there. And this weather has really taken a turn. I walked over here from Dundas Square and it was sunny and rather hot. And I was actually battling the sun along the way. And now it's kind of overcast and rather windy. And there's what else but the CN Tower. And the Canadian National Broadcasting Headquarters is right there. That's the CBC. And another look up at the Ritz. And just on the left is Simcoe Place. And once upon a time, Simcoe Place kind of dominated this area of the skyline. That was the only 500 plus footer around here if you don't include the CN Tower. But since then, it's been dwarfed by a number of taller buildings. That's including the Ritz here and the neighboring RBC Tower, both of which are connected to the path So you could find your way to a number of other prominent towers downtown, just underground, along with a number of subway stations. There's the Metro Toronto Convention Center. And there's a Blue Jay game tonight, just after seven, and they're playing the Cincinnati Reds. So we should start to see a number of Blue Jay fans funneling towards the Sky Dome, which is just over in that direction. And there's a look east along Front Street West. So John Street terminates at Front Street here and to the north it terminates at Stephanie Street as well as Grange Park. Although that wasn't always the case, it used to extend south all the way to Lakeshore Boulevard. And there's a statue of Canadian pianist Glenn Gould. 
who lived up at an apartment on St. Clair Avenue for most of his life. And I think John Street is just a little over a kilometer in length. There's a Boston pizza on the right. $12 pizza lunch, that looks pretty decent. And welcome to John Street. Here's a look north. There seems to be a fair bit of construction going on. And there is the Sky Dome. And right next to that is the CN Tower. And just behind that is Ripley's Aquarium. And across the street is the roundhouse and the rec room. So there's quite a lot going on in this area. There's a lot of free game drinking going on too, I bet. I'm gonna cross over to the other side of the street. John Street here looks in dire need of a resurfacing. There's a double-decker city sightseeing tour bus here. Thank you. So this is north up the west side of John Street. Walking towards the heart of the entertainment district. And back in the 1800s, this was more of an industrial area. Although lately it's been dubbed something of a cultural corridor. In fact, the former city planner, Jennifer Kiesmat, referred to it as that. And we are back to Wellington Street West. So I started this one just a little bit east of here. There's the Shang, or not the Shangri-La, I'm thinking of another hotel I went through recently, the Ritz-Carlton and CBC and the Tower. There's the 27 story Metro Hall. That's a postmodern style office tower. So I think I've voiced my displeasure over how it looks already in this video. Actually, at one point, it handled city hall duties back when the city of Toronto turned into the mega city. The city hall at Nathan Phillips Square had to be retrofitted to handle all the added counselors. So while that was going on, the old Metro Toronto headquarters served as a temporary city hall. And here's King Street West. And 
There's the Bell Lightbox Cinema. That's used quite extensively during the Toronto International Film Festival, which happens along King Street, although it's been suggested it should be moved to John Street, just because King Street's a major transit corridor here with the streetcars, and it ends up getting closed off for the film festival. Really, it makes more sense just to hold it on John Street. And right here at this corner I'm standing, which is the Northwest corner. Back in 1847, over 800 Irish immigrants died. And they died of typhus fever. And the hospital had constructed a bunch of temporary sheds at that intersection that was looking after them. And just here on the left is a taco restaurant, La Carnita. They've got a big patio. But they illegally claimed some sidewalk space to use their patio when it first opened, and that generated some controversy. I think it was in this area here. They had set up a patio, and it was later pointed out that this was to be a public space. It's also a sweet Jesus ice cream shop there, where this Fox and the Fiddle is, which is a rather, I guess, upscale or trendy bar these days. It used to be an old Fox and the Fiddle in a really old home. It had a completely diff different atmosphere. And there is probably my favorite new condo development in the city. Those are the PJ condos. And that is 48 stories tall. I just like the use of red brick. It's a nice change from the usual sea of glass panels. And this is Adelaide Street. And there's a Hooters. I think that's the only one in the city. And there's some old homes here, which I think date back to the 1800s that have been converted into bars. One last look up at the PJ condos. If you are a wealthy billionaire, I feel like buying me a unit somewhere. I would not complain if it was in that building. And there used to be the office pub here. I think that's where this place now is, St. John's Tavern. There's the Town Crier Pub. And just across the street here are a pair of homes that were constructed in 1880. And those are Second Empire style. And it looks like the retail spaces are for lease. There's Nelson Street, and this used to be a Jack Astor's, which is a suburban style restaurant. Right across the street used to be a Milestones that is now marked. And where that Marshall's is, originally opened up as a Palladium, which was a large Dave and Buster style arcade. That later turned into Circa Nightclub. And the star attraction was the Paramount Theater, now the Scotiabank Theater. And there used to be a Chapters bookstore, which is now a Michaels. And this all opened, I think, in 98. And believe it or not, it's set to be 
demolished pretty soon and replaced with what else but a condo. There will be a smaller theater put in at the spot. And just on the right is the ballroom. A bowling alley bar. And that used to be a bar called Montana that I remember going to a lot back in the day. And that last street I crossed Adelaide and this street, Richmond, used to just be lined with bars and clubs. In fact, that complex had another club in it called Republic. That is now a linen chest. And on the right here is the famous 299 Queen Building. Formerly the Chum City Building. A lot of people just called it the City TV Building or the Chum Building or the Much Music Building. <laughs> and just on the corner here at Queen and John, there used to be a little booth you could go in called Speaker's Corner. And if you're lucky, they would air your little rant on a TV show called Speaker's Corner. But now it's owned by Bell Globe Media. And here is Queen Street West. And that's the look east. This is usually one of the most vibrant streets in the city. Although I remember coming through here during the midst of the pandemic on a Saturday afternoon and it was dead to the world. None of the shops were allowed to open. There's one of the surviving Starbucks. They closed up a lot of their locations in the city and that second cup, which has been there forever, is now closed. There's another one of my favorite condos in the city. There's a place called Members Only. And here's a really unique looking storefront. And we're now in the Grange Park neighborhood which is bound by Spadina to the west, College Street to the north, University to the east, and Queen to the south, where I just was. I think that's where I bought my single speed. That's where the urbane cyclists used to be. They're now up on college, I think. And here is Stephanie Street, so this marks the end of the line for John Street. The end of the line, the end of the road. However you want to say it. So we'll be walking north through Grange Park. And Grange Park takes its name from a mansion that was built in 1817 that has since been incorporated into part of the University of, or the Art Gallery of Toronto. I almost said University. There's the remnants of an old church. So somewhat disappointingly, apparently the city has been cracking down on alcohol consumption in spaces like this.
There's an off-leash dog. Grange Park dog off-leash area, to be specific. And straight ahead, you can see part of that old mansion and the backside of the Art Gallery of Ontario. And just on the right, we have the Ontario College of Art and Design. And there's a slackliner. All the cool kids are doing that these days. And back when I used to work in the financial district, I would sometimes come to this park with some takeout. It's a little bit better in the fall, actually. Once these trees don't have leaves on them, because you can see the financial district quite clearly in that direction. There's a look south at the tower. There's a neat sculpture just over to the left. And this is Beverly Street. And it seems the sun has made another appearance tonight, or today. That's kind of nice. There's a look south down Beverly. So the art gallery on the right here was established back in 1900 and from 2004 to 2008 it underwent a rather extensive major renovation and the chief designer on that was Frank Geary that's hosted a number of notable works over the years including a lot of group of seven pieces I've often heard to it referred to as a bit of a submarine. And just on the west side of Beverly is the beginning of Chinatown. I think they have free admission on Wednesdays, if I'm not mistaken. Feel free to correct me down in the comments. There's some other gallery spaces across the street, although the Hair Gallery and Art Square appear to be undergoing some renovations. And this 
is McCall Street coming up. So I'm walking east on the south side of Dundas Street West. There's the Village Genius Pub. There's a look south down McCall Street. There's currently a rib festival going on at Dundas Square, which is several blocks to the west of here, or east of here. Although I don't think I will get that far. I was just there actually to record a video heading over to the Ritz Carlton. And a few days ago, I posted a walk that went along that section of Dundas Street. And here is a police station. And they've got these gates here, but where I'm standing is actually a public square, or at least it's supposed to be. This is 52 Division. And here is University Avenue. There's Look South. I'm just thinking, should I hop into the subway here? You know what I'll do? I'll head north and I'll pop into Queens Park Station. So we'll head north up University here. This video is looking to be only about 29 minutes, which is a bit on the short side. And this is a street where a few days ago Arnold Schwarzenegger was seen riding his bicycle. So this is north up the west side of University Avenue. And this is an area known for four rather prominent hospitals. On the right we have Sick Kids and Toronto General. And on the left is Princess Margaret in Mount Sinai.
And here is Elm Street. And you can turn left here and head into Baldwin Village. I wonder if those guys are taking bike shares down to the Sky Dome to catch the Jays playing the Reds. Speaking of catching, I'm going to do a live stream at 8. It is now 6. I have to take the dog I'm taking care of out for a walk. And I have to find some food. So I'm going to have my hands full over the next two hours. There's the Walter and Maria Schroeder Institute for Brain Innovation and Recovery. You might notice less pedestrian activity on the stretch university relative to where I was down on John Street. That's usually the case. It's a big grand boulevard, but there's not a whole lot to do on university itself. play if you're recording university is to walk south down the other side of the street and that way you get to walk towards the CN Tower most of the way. There's a sculpture in front of the Princess Margaret Hospital. Those girls didn't ask me if I wanted to make a donation, but they did to the person behind me. There's a Swiss chalet. Talk about restaurants that have gone downhill over the years. Their portion sizes have gotten a lot smaller. And their price has gone up considerably. I remember in the early 90s seeing them advertise a family of four could get four quarter piece or quarter chicken piece meals for $19.99. Now you'd be lucky to get one for that. There's where Intact Insurance is located. There's plans to stick a 24 story tower on that property. And we have made it to College Street, where University Avenue comes to an end. There's the Provincial Legislative Assembly building straight ahead. It's the Canadian equivalent to a state capital. And it looks out down University. I don't know why I'm crossing the street. As I intend on popping into the subway station here. I'm going to have to fish out my mask. Should 
sure I have it in my pocket somewhere. There we go. All right, let's head down into the station. I think I've got this thing on right. I could really go in either direction here. If I go on the southbound train, I could just ride the loop down and then back up to Young and Eglinton. Or if I go north, I can transfer at St. George and then get on line one and head north up to Young and Eglinton. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Let's just take whichever train comes first. southbound two minutes and on that note I hope you enjoyed this walk starting at the Ritz Carlton heading north up John Street to Grange Park and then over Dundas to University Avenue and then north up to Queens Park Station And it looks like I'm going to be on this train here. So if you wish to support the channel, there's links to Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. And I have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. And there's now a super thanks button at the bottom of these videos. All right. Thanks for watching. And I will catch you on the next one. Next station is Museum, Museum Station.